Are they getting their revenues in? Park Yongju. What currency are they getting their revenues in? Do you understand revenue? Do you understand revenue? Yes. What currency are they getting their revenues in? currency does a US company get the revenue in? They're traveling from the US to Europe. Do you understand revenue? Then what currency are they getting their revenue in? It's a US company with US customers. Dollars. What currency are their costs in? They're traveling to Europe. Euro. Euro, so what's the risk? What risk, yes, what's the risk of the exchange rate? What could happen, that's a problem. Euro gets stronger or Euro gets weaker? Euro gets stronger, okay, that's the first kind of risk. Okay, what other kind of risk do they have? Park John one. US dollar could That's the same thing. There's only two US dollar and euro, so if the euro gets stronger, it means the US dollar is getting weaker, right? What other kind of risk? If it was just this risk, it would be the same as Lufthansa, right? Lufthansa was just transaction. We did the case study of Lufthansa, then we don't need to do this case study, right? Lufthansa was just straightforward transaction risk. Okay? They made a contract for a certain amount and they had just a straightforward transaction risk. The currency gets stronger or weaker, right? But what's complicating about this situation? What kind of other kind of risk do they have? That Lufthansa didn't have in this case. Lufthansa made a contract. Do you understand the contract? 
they made a contract. They're going to buy 20 planes, right? It's going to cost them 20 million. Can they change their mind? No. No, they can't. They have to pay the money. Okay, what's different about this situation compared to Lufthansa? They don't know the number of students. They don't know the number of students, okay, that they're going to get. Here we can see I wrote down. How many customers are we going to get? Unknown. They have unknown revenues and unknown costs. <coughs> Which one is easier to hedge? Lufthansa's case or AIFS case? Lufthansa's case. Which one is more like real situation for companies? AIFS case. Right, so we can have this one where we just make contracts, okay? But we also have many cases where we get revenues and costs of our business from another country, okay? So we have to deal with that kind of risk as well. The customer number can go up or down. Okay, so when you read this page four, you should have seen that they made some box to describe this kind of risk, okay? Uh, so this is the shifting box. Did you read about this? Yes. Does anybody want to explain this? Shifting box? How can I close this? Okay, so in this uh, shifting box, let's, can you see this box here? We'll make bigger. Uh, we have these things, right? We have actual sales volume compared to projected. So we have a high sales volume, high number of customers, or we have a low number of customers. There are two options. Which is better for us? High. Which is worse? Then we have out of the money in the money. It's a little bit more complicated, the exchange rate. Okay? So <coughs> let's look at what they explain about the uh, out of the money and in the money. So for example, let's look at square one, right? Square one means we bought the currency, but we don't need it because our sales came in below projections, right? So we made a guess about how much hedging we need to do. So let's say we hedge 20 million, okay? Then our customers is very low. We don't need 20 million euros. Let's just say it's one to one, right? We don't need the 20 million euros. So we have, in box one, we have less customers, okay? Let's say we have just 10 million. So 10 million is 10 million euros. What are we going to do with this 10 million euros we got here? What we don't need now. What are we going to do with that 10 million? Throw it away? What are we going to do? We changed our dollars to euros to pay for the costs. But the cost is just 10 million because we have less customers, right? So what are we going to do with these extra euros which we made a forward contract? Right? So we have to, we can't change our mind, we have to take the extra euros. What are we going to do with them? Change back to dollars. We live in the US, we need dollars to live in the US, right? So in that case, in one, I need to change back, I change 10 million euros back to dollars. Okay, so we have some risk here. The, the euro we can lose money on this, whether the euro got stronger or weaker. Why well, this can be confusing? Because usually, strong euro is a bad situation for us. Okay? Yes. Well, in this case, strong euro is a better situation. Because when we change the euro back, we get more. Okay? And the weak euro is the bad situation, in this case. So, this is a bad place. Especially if we are locked into a surplus forward contracts on which we would lose money. So if they made this forward contract, they have to get 20 million euros, then the euro gets weaker, right? Let's say a weaker euro. Here it was one to one. Okay, what's a weaker euro? So a weaker euro is uh, going to be 0 0.9, right? Euros is going to be equal to one dollar. So uh, here, Sorry, uh, 0 0.9 dollars will be equal to 1 euro. So here I will get back, instead of 10, 10 million euros being 10 million dollars, 10 million euros will be how much dollars? 9 million. 
So I lose a million. Is that a lot of money, a million dollars? Yes. yes. Right? Do you understand the problem in box one? Yes. Okay, so we out of the money means unfavorable exchange rate move. Okay? So the first one is the worst box. This is the worst box. We got le less customers than we wanted. So we're losing our profits in the first place because we have less customers. And then on top of that, we made a forward contract for too many euros and we lost on the exchange rate. So we have less business, we didn't make much profit, and on top of that we lost a million. Do you like this box? No. No, right? So let's look at the square two. Okay, square two, we also got the low number of people, but this time we're in the money. Do you understand in the money? Yes. Which is more positive, in the money or out of the money? In the money. In the money is more positive. Out of the money means losing money, right? So in the money, we're going to have a stronger euro, okay? So, a <coughs> stronger euro is going to be 1.1 dollar is equals to 1 euro, and we'll get back 1.1 million dollars, and that means we gained, we gained 1 million. 1 million. Okay, so we got less customers. Are we happy that we got less customers? No, we made less profit, but at least we got one million back. Okay? We gained one million on the so we gained one million on the foreign exchange. On the forward contract. Okay? Are you following? Yes. So is this as bad as number one? No, a little bit better than number one. So then let's look at box number three. We got more customers than we expected. Okay? But <laughs> we the exchange rate moved out of the money so we have to buy the extra money we need uh, at the spot rate okay so <clears throat> then in the last box we have good and buy bad news our sales came in higher than expected which is good but it needs that means that we need more uh, currency so unfortunately, the currency rate moved. Uh, the euro got uh, weaker, right? So we have to buy it at the higher price. So this one is not as bad because we get a lot of customers. But on this side, we said that uh, the euro is getting weaker on the left, right? So a weak euro. If we get more customers, okay? Let's say we have a high number of customers than we expected. So uh, we expected to get 20 million of customers, but now we have 30 million. Okay, so we need an extra 10 million euros. Okay, but in this case, on the left hand side, the euro was weaker. So we just need 0.9 dollars to buy. One euros, right? So we need nine million dollars to buy the extra ten million euros. So this is the best box for us, right? Then the box four is a combination of the good and bad news. We need the extra ten million euros, but it's going to cost eleven million dollars to buy the extra euros, right? Eleven million to buy the extra euros in box four. So do you understand that? Right? On this side we have weaker euro. On this side we have stronger euro. Okay? So in this case, uh, which is the worst box? One is the worst box. That's the highest risk. That's the one we're most worried about. Okay? And generally, this line is higher risk than this line. Why? Because if we make low number of customers, we are going to get lower profit. Okay? Yes. If we make high number of customers, we'll get a profit, higher profit, because we get a margin on each customer. Okay? So here if we get some foreign exchange damage, it's bad, but we got a high number of customers. So we made a high margin, we made a high profit. <coughs> but here, if we make low number of customers, we didn't make as much profit as we expected, and on top of that we get some foreign exchange damage, 
would be very serious for the, pro for, for the company. Okay? So, just, they talked about the past here. They said there was a time when they covered just 80%. They thought that's reasonable. Does that seem reasonable? Let's cover 80% of our thing. Yes? But what happened to them? There came one bad year when we got burnt. Do you understand to get burnt? Yes. Do you like getting burnt? No. No? Volume came in higher than expected. Right? It was more than they expected. And we only covered 80%. So it would be here. Say they cover 80%, they just get 16 million, right? They expect to get 20 million, but they just cover 80%, let's say 16 million, right? Then here, they need to buy an extra 14 million euros. Not 10 million now, 14 million. They got more customers. So, they lost $700,000, okay? Against the rate they used when they priced the catalog, okay? So, now they cover 100% of their needs. So here they lost money. Why? Because they only charged the people in the catalog uh, 10 million dollars. But they have to pay 11 million dollars for the euros. So this was a loss of 1 million. Okay? And this again was a gain of 1 million. They charged the people 10 million dollars and now they only need 9 million dollars to buy 10 million euros. So right? To pay their costs. So this one was uncovered or unhedged, and they lost the money. So this is what happened them this year. They lost 700,000 on this foreign exchange transaction. So he said now they learned their lesson because they got burnt. If you get burnt touching the frying pan, are you going to touch the frying pan again? No. No? Are you sure? Yes. Try again just to see. If that happens twice. So it's the same for them, right? They got burnt, so now they cover 100% of their needs. So then, within the cover, what proportion of should they use forward contracts against options? Okay? So, let's see what he says here. He has a quote. He says, in the long run, no matter how much you hedge, half the time you win, half the time you lose. So half the time it's going to be here, half the time it's going to be here. It's hard to predict the future exchange rate, right? He says, you still need to hedge for the short run. With options, you can stabilize your earnings. Okay? Assume we buy contracts and the dollar continues to be weak, then it goes to parity. Okay? So, with the reason he likes options, with options, I have the choice to step away. Okay? Do you want to try step away? Gives him the choice to take the profit as well as. as <coughs> Uh, saving himself against the loss, right? So he gives the example here. Other companies can make their price cheaper if the exchange rate gets better. So with options, he likes to have that option that he can make his price cheaper, right? Here they're doing the pricing. So just they're advertising in the school in September. So if the exchange rate changes, he has the option contract. He has a bit of flexibility. Okay. So, then he's going to make a spreadsheet to look at all of these things, okay? Do you understand spreadsheet? Yes. So this is what we're going to put into the spreadsheet, okay? So, first of all, they're going to do an economic and a technical analysis of the exchange rate, okay? Uh, so, they followed the movement of the exchange rate. They looked at the long-term trend of the dollar against the euro. So let's look at exhibit four. Okay, the long-term trend of the dollar against the euro. So this is 1970s until 2003. That's the long-term trend. Okay, so in the 70s, one euro was 2.4 dollars. So what's the long-term trend? Today it's 1.8. What is the long-term trend of the euro against the dollar? Hmm? Which is getting weaker? Euro is getting weaker against the dollar, right? We said euro is on the left, 
going down, base currency is getting weaker. So that's the first thing they look at. So if you look at the long term trend, what's going to happen? Euro will get weaker or stronger? But that's long term, we, we don't really know in the short term, right? So next thing they do is, uh, okay, they also look at the British pound. But for this case study, we're just going to look at the Euro, right, just to make it easier. Anyway, it's the same thing, it's just a different currency, right? Then uh, the short term and medium term movements. So exhibit six and exhibit seven. This involved technical analysis of the charts, okay? As well as fundamental economic analysis. For the economic analysis, they looked at the trade deficit, okay? So we looked at the factors which affect the exchange rate. According to them, they're going to do technical analysis by looking at the history of, of the, this is the, different companies have different ways, right? We didn't look into how Lufthansa predicted the exchange rate. We saw that mainly Lufthansa was listening to the experts. They just looked at the experts' opinion, right? This company is doing their own type of analysis too. So this is the medium term, 1993 to 2003. So what's, been hap what's happening nowadays? Euro is getting stronger or weaker in this medium term? It's opposite to the long term, right? In the long term it was getting weaker, but in the medium term now it's getting stronger. And if we look at the short term too, it's going to be the same. This is from May to July, just the last three months. Euro is getting stronger. Okay, Euro is on the left, the line is going up, Euro is getting stronger. From 118 to 124. Okay, then uh, this again is the medium term, right? Another graph of the medium term of two years. The last two years, Euro has been getting stronger against the dollar. Okay, and then the economic analysis, we saw there's a lot of things we can look at in the economic analysis, right? Fiscal policy, uh, trade, okay? Interest rates, monetary policy. At that time, this company decided to look at trade. Okay, the trade deficit in the US. So what's happening to the trade deficit in the US here? Trade deficit is minus number, so trade deficit is getting better or getting worse in the US? Getting worse, right? So, what does that mean for the exchange rate? How does the current account affect the exchange rate? If we have a big trade deficit, our currencies should depreciate, right? To equal things out. Okay? So, let's write those down and see what do you think is going to happen, right? Long term trend, we have weaker euro, okay? What about medium and short term? Medium and short is the opposite, right? Is a stronger euro. What about the economic analysis they made? The current, the current account deficit. Weaker dollar, so stronger euro, right? So, what do you think is going to happen then? What's your prediction for the exchange rate? Hmm? If we look at the, the history, look at the trends, and look at the economic data, what is it telling us? Stronger euro or weaker euro? So discuss with your partner. You're at this point, you're looking at these graphs. What do you think is going to happen? Yes? Where? Uh, this is the Great British Bank. We're not looking at this one. We're looking at the euro. Here, this is the euro. Okay? So here we can see, right, euro on the left, US dollar on the right, this is the last two years, right? Now we're in 2004, this is since 2002, medium term trend, okay? <laughs> Do you understand this graph? Yes. Euro is on the left, US dollar on the right. Yes. Here, 0.9, one euro was 0.9 dollars, now one euro is 0.125 dollars. 
So it's changed 30% in the last two years. Okay, so we can see this exchange rate can change. So we do need to do hedging. Okay. We saw when they did just 80% hedging, they lost nearly a million dollars, right? So trade you new, what do you think? Uh, he's absent. absent today. Uh, Kim Sang Hee. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? What will be weaker? You think it's going to change? It's going to start to get weaker? Because historically the long term trend is weaker? Okay, what about the US current account deficit? You're not worried about that? That's not important? No? Okay, so you think the euro is going to come opposite, just like in the case of Lufthansa, right? The trend was going one way, and actually it changed in Lufthansa's <laughs> case, right? The experts thought it might change. Okay, so let's have a show of hands. Hands up, who thinks the euro will get weaker? You said weaker. Who thinks the euro will get stronger? Okay, most people think the euro will get stronger, right? So if we go back to our, we have to look at the steps we have to take when deciding to hedge or not, right? Step one, determining the foreign exchange exposure, right? Forecasting the exchange rate, step two. So we said this is economic exposure, right? Then forecast the exchange rate. How comfortable are you with your forecast? Are you guys comfortable with your forecast or not? <laughs> not comfortable? Okay, then assess the impact. So we think it's going to get stronger. So if we have a stronger euro, what impact is that going to have for us? If we have a stronger euro and we get less customers, what's going to happen? Let's say we're going to do hedging, right, of 20 million, okay? So we get a stronger euro, and we only get 10,000 customers. So we have 10,000 euros we need to change back into dollars. Is that positive or negative for us? Positive, positive in that case, right? What about a strong, we, we have more customers. Is the strong euro positive or negative? negative? Negative, right? So it's the opposite, depending whether we get more customers or less customers if we are going to do the forward contract, okay? If we do nothing, what's going to be the impact of the stronger euro? If we do nothing, we don't do any hedging at all. It's going to be a disaster, right? Very bad effect, okay? <laughs> so, we do, we do need to hedge, right? If we, don't, if we do nothing, we could have lose our money with a stronger euro, okay? Does everybody understand that risk? You just said that risk at the start of the class, right? If the euro gets stronger, we lose our money. So then we have to select the appropriate hedging instruments, right? Are we going to use options or forwards? That's our next question. So in order to do that, we're going to look at what they're going to do is look at the different scenarios, make a scenario analysis. Do you understand scenario analysis? So they think they're going to get 25,000 customers, participants, okay? And the current exchange rate is 122, all right? But this can all change. So they want to make a model. Do you understand the model? So the model, the spreadsheet is going to look like this. It's going to be do nothing, do hedging with forwards, do hedging with options. Stable dollar, the same as today's price. Strong dollar or weak dollar. Okay? And we have to think about the number of customers. So here, we're going to find out with 25,000 customers, with 30,000 customers, and 10,000 customers. Okay? So we can see that their worst case scenario, do you understand the scenario? Yes. Worst case scenario is just 10,000 customers. Okay? So that's quite a bad situation for them. So... Uh, <coughs> 
that's lower, that's a bigger difference than at the top. The, the, the more students they're going to get is kind of limited, right? Not that much more than they expect. But the downside could be higher than they expect if there is some terrorist attack. This is 2004, right? So just after 2001. So they reflect this in their uh, spreadsheet. So just in the next class, uh, we're going to look at this, this kind of uh, spreadsheet with the different options on the different sides, right? Um, we're going to, here you can see this kind of a template, right? What will happen if the final volume is 25,000? And then we have percentage cover, forward contracts 25%, option contracts 75%. If the exchange rate is here, if the exchange rate is here, if the exchange rate is here. So we're going to make what would be our profit and loss on each case with forwards and options. Okay, just we're going to do just with 100% options and 100% forwards. So we can compare. And then we're going to use that information, that data, to decide how much options and how much uh, forwards should we use. Okay? So here they have explained, if you want to review at the very end, it explains again about forward contracts and options. Okay? And this here is just money market trading. And this is do nothing. Right? So this one explains again the hedging techniques. So then uh, let's finish there for today. And I'll see you next week.